Hello and thank you for watching. My name is Rachel Barnett with Gentle Frog. I'm here to create videos for you to help you understand QuickBooks slightly better than you currently do. If you have any comments, questions, or suggestions, please put them in the chat box. Thank you. Hi, my name is Rachel Barnett with Gentle Frog. In today's video of custom QuickBooks training, I'm going to show you how to record payments against your loans. In this example, we have a loan that we've taken out for a piece of equipment we've called Awesome Equipment. It's right here under Fixed Asset, Awesome Equipment, $10,000. In order to purchase this equipment, we took out a loan and said down here, Loan for Awesome Equipment, $10,000. Let me show you how to record the loan payment for this. I'm not going to use the bank feeds because I just don't have a, a loan payment within the sample bank feeds. I'm going to show you how to record this payment using the, the check option within QuickBooks Online. The same concepts will apply if you're downloading directly from the bank and you're classifying the checks as they come through your bank feeds. I'm going to go to the upper left hand corner to the plus new. Under the vendors column I'm going to select check. Under the payee I'm going to say blue bank because that's who I took the loan out with. The money is going to come from my checking account rather than my savings or any other option. I'm just selecting which bank it comes from. Today's the day that I'm going to issue the check. The check number isn't 71, it's 72. Doesn't matter. Like you pick whatever your check number is. If you don't have a check, if it's just ACH, go ahead and pick ACH. Whatever works the best for you works great for me. Down here for category, this is where you're going to select why you're giving Blue Bank the money. And so I, I tend to use my keyboard more than I use my mouse. So I'm just going to type in the word loan and say, okay, this is a loan for awesome equipment. Out of the money that I'm going to send them, I'm going to say that $425 of the money is for the equipment. I'm going to say that, that the extra $75 in my pretend $500 payment is for interest expense. So I type in interest expense and I realize I don't have it in my chart of accounts. No big deal. Let me go ahead and just add it real quick. I'm going to select Add Interest Expense. Make sure this thing says Expenses. This has a good name. I don't care about the detail type. I'm not going to add a description. I'm going to say Save and Close. Over to the right, I'm going to select $75. I'm not basing this well, I am basing this off thin air. If I were doing this for myself or for a client, I would base it off the information from the loan document. Maybe your loan came with an amortization table, or maybe when you look at your monthly statement, it tells you how much money is going to principal and how much money is going to interest. When it tells you that, the loan, that, that's what it means by the principal, and then interest is just interest. So let me go ahead and choose save and close. And I'm going to show you how this impacts your financial reports. Uh, when I look at my fixed asset, my equipment didn't go down at all. My equipment remains at $10,000. But when I come further down and I go to my loan, I can see my loan is decreased by $475. Let me go ahead and go to the profit and loss report so you can see what happened there. I'm just going to make things simple and I'm going to change this to show today's date only. When I look at today's date, I can see I had interest expense of $75. There's only one more thing to show you and this is not because you need to see it, but rather because I want to show you this. If I go to the chart of accounts and I look up the loan and I go view register to the right of my loan. Okay, I'll get rid of this pop-up. And now I can see my original loan and my payment towards the loan. The way that I made this work was that I entered my check and I used the split feature. I said split this payment into two different categories. A different option if you wanted is I could have come over here to journal entry and I could have instead, not in addition, I could have said, you know what, Blue Bank has increased the value of my loan by $75 for the reason of interest expense. And then I could have said the payment that I'm making to Blue Bank is $500 and then get rid of this line, save and close. 
it's the same, right? It's I've added $75. I made a $500 payment. In the end, the amount of money that I owe the company remains the same. This is two routes to the same place. Within QuickBooks, there's many situations where you can do things this way or that way, and it's okay. Sometimes I'll try to show you more than one way just so you have it so you can pick the way that makes the most sense for you. In the case of your loan, you just want to make sure that your loan ending balance matches whatever is on your statement from your bank. All right. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Again, my name is Rachel Barnett with Gentle Frog. Thank you.